Hey guys, welcome to the Introvert Dating Success Podcast and show. I'm your host as always, Harry Wilmington. And today's show, we're going to be answering a question from a guy that wants to know uh, if it's okay to possibly start fantasizing about what it would be like to be in a relationship with somebody after one date, okay? And by the way, this is part of our uh, 25 days of introvert dating advice down countdown to Christmas. I'm putting out a video and a show a day for 25 days leading up to December 25th, which coincidentally is also my 300th show. So awesome on that. But yeah, so every single day you'll be getting some new advice and this is one of the ones we're answering today. If you have a question you'd like answered on one of these shows, you can write to me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. Also, go to the website, introvertdatingsuccess.com, and get a free copy of my best selling ebook and now audiobook, No Girls for You The Ultimate Guide to Losing the Girl of Your Dreams. If you've ever wondered why the things you're doing right now to try to win women is actually causing you to lose them, this book will point that out. You can get it for free simply by signing up for my video newsletter with your name and email address, and you'll have instant access to it right away. All right? Also, if you want to support the show, subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Harry Wilmington, and also you can send me a cash app donation at dollar sign Harry Wilmington. All right, let's go ahead and get to this guy's question. So here's what he says. He says, I guess maybe I've just been lucky lately, but I've been going out on some rather good dates. Last night, I went out with an absolutely awesome woman and everything just seemed to click. And that's great because let me tell you, I've had periods of time where I'd get that first date and or I had several first dates in a row that were just kind of okay. And you always can tell when like you're feeling the vibe and they're feeling the vibe or when just one of you is feeling it and the other person's not. Those are some hard dates to go on. So if you're able to have a successful string of dates in a row, more power to you, okay? And the stuff at my website can definitely help you figure out how to get that so you're gonna have more, be- more good dates than bad dates. Continuing on, he says, uh, we had a lot in common. Conversation flowed naturally. She was smart and laughed at all my witty humor. She was pretty funny herself um, as well. Overall, I was just able to be myself and didn't feel like I had to impress her, which was a good sign in my book because it's normally something I feel forced to do. Yeah, when you're able to go on a date with something, somebody that, that it, where it just flows naturally, you're able to talk and she's being funny, you're being funny, there's not feeling like a lot of pressure and it's just a genuinely good feeling, that can be a hard feeling to get on dates. And so when you get it, it's absolutely wonderful. The problem though is that, to be honest guys, there may be times where like you don't get to experience a whole lot of great dates. So when you do experience that great date, your brain automatically goes to, oh my God, this was so good. I don't want to lose this girl. What do I got to do? And then that can cause you to add pressure to yourself to have to make this woman in particular be the one that works out. And you never want to be in that headspace, but we'll get more to that in a minute. So anyway, he says, we had dinner, then went to this arcade where she pretended to kick my butt in every game we played, had a drink, and it all ended in a really good long kiss. That's also great because I know there's some of you guys out there that are afraid to get that kiss on a first date. And this is one of those situations where you got to really feel out, you know, if you're having a good time, she's having a good time and you're able to like put your arm around her and make other kind of moves during the night, then you might feel in the course of that, like, hey, you know what? I feel like I could kiss her and it'll be totally fine. And sometimes you might go for the kiss and you might have felt all these things and it doesn't happen. But you know what? I found you don't lose any points for going for a kiss. You do lose points for waiting too long. I've had it where I've had, I've kissed girls on a first date and later they said, hey, that was a little too early, but it was, it was whatever. And then later on, they were perfectly fine kissing me. I've had dates where in that first date, midway through that first date, we're making out in the bookstore, making out in a pizza place, like it's already happening because whether it was we built a good rapport online or we just had that vibe going where we really felt it, I was able to just read like, hey, you know what? I think if, if I go for this kiss, She's not going to mind it. And also, I'm always looking at women's women's faces to see what signals they're sending, whether it's like they're batting their eyelids, they're looking at my lips also. There are signs that they'll throw out that let you know, hey, if you kiss me right now, I ain't going to turn it down, okay? But that's, that's more advanced stuff. If you get some of my programs at the website, you'll start to get a better idea of what to look out for in terms of those kind of things so you can really feel the vibe of when a kiss should be happening and not. But kudos for this guy for getting the kiss on the first date, all right? That's, that's a great thing. First date kisses are fantastic. Continuing, he says, perhaps I'm just a hopeless romantic and others may react differently, but I always start to fantasize about if I could see myself in a relationship with that person and all the fun things we could do together. I mean, it was only one date, but even she said she wanted to bake something for me already. (laughs) I don't do this every single date and I'm not someone to fall in love quickly or anything like that. It's just when I find someone I'm actually interested in, I want to continue seeing them and see where things go. 
Am I weird for that? So just to back up a little bit, the part where she he says uh, she she even she says she wanted to bake something for me already. Okay, so when women are coming at you on these dates and they're verbalizing things that indicate want to see you in the future, fantastic. She's saying she wants to come at your place and bake or whatever. That's a good indicator. That lets you know in her head that she's already starting to think about possibly seeing you more than just this one time. Okay, that's great for them. Women that verbalize that kind of stuff, that is a positive sign. What I want to caution you about, though, guy, is that just because verbalizing future speak things for her works well for you does not mean it goes the other way. And this is just, you know, hey, I coach guys on this and I've had my own personal experience. I'm just speaking my personal experience. I have found that on those first few dates, if I'm the one that's talking future speak, more often than not, it scares them away. And that could be just because it feels like a forced thing. It's almost like when you start to speak future speak, it's as if you're saying, we already have to commit to hanging out with each other. And a woman doesn't want to get the feeling of you committing to her on that level yet until she's there. So even when she verbalizes verbalizes something like, hey, it'd be great to come back at your place sometime, your response shouldn't be, oh yeah, you should totally come over next week and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. You just say something like, oh, that would be a nice thing. And you do not verbalize anything that indicates future speed because what you're going to do for her is you're going to leave her with the wonderment of whether or not you're gonna call, of whether or not you had a good time, of whether or not you wanna see her in the future. Because that's a thing, the unknowing part of that is the thing that actually drives up her attraction because she's gonna go out and talk to her girlfriends about, well, I had a great date with this guy and I mentioned I wanted to go bake at his house, but he didn't really say say if he wanted to do it or not. Then he, at the end of the date, he gave me a hug and then said bye. He didn't say if he wanted to call me later or talk to me later or ask me out later. And Those conversations, that anxiousness, that not knowing about what your feelings were on these dates, these are things that actually increase a woman's desire for you at a faster pace, okay? So this is why you don't need to be verbalizing whether or not you agree with her or not about wanting to do future stuff, all right? At best, at the end of the date, you get her number. Like, I I met a lot of women online, so I would not ever get their numbers online, but at the end of a date, if I had a good time, I'd say, oh, hey, let me get your number. That's as much much of a hint as they get from me about whether or not I'm going to pop possibly contact them in the future. And even when I get their number, again, I err on the side of, I don't contact them for a few days before I hit them up for the next date, all right? So I give them time to sit with themselves and wonder about how, if I'm gonna call them again, reminiscing about the great time they had, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So, but in answer to this guy's question, when he's saying uh, he starts to fantasize about if he can see himself in a relationship. So here's the reality, is that when you are going on a first date and second date with a woman, That is you indicating that on some level, you're hoping there might possibly be a future with her. And so you in your head might be thinking, well, logically, this is where we get into, this is where logic trips us up, guys, all right? You're thinking in your head, well, logically, if I'm going on dates with her, it must mean that I see a future with her. Therefore, I need to start thinking in terms of future stuff about what we could do, how we're gonna be together, what our lives could possibly be like. And doing this thing, is more often than not what is probably tripping you up. Because here's the thing, guy, fantasy is not real. A fantasy is your forced projection of what you hope could possibly happen. But recognize there are two people in a scenario. So your fantasies don't matter if she's not on board for that fantasy, okay? But more to the point is that in the process of thinking that far ahead, you may inadvertently take your eyes off the prize, which is, doing the things in the current moment that are the right moves to be able to progress her attraction for you enough to want to even be in your fantasized future, all right? And so what you don't want to make the mistake of doing is already projecting out the things you want to do with this person and then trying to verbalize those things or trying to say, oh man, and for our next three dates, we should do X, Y, and Z. And oh, you should be meeting my friends at some point. Oh, also my parents come into town. You should do that because guys will do that. They'll start trying to put these things out. After one or two good dates, you start you start to think, well, it's been one or two good dates. She must be feeling the same way I do, so she wants to already be in my life. Let me now plan these things out. And in the process, you will now skip the other steps that you actually need to do in order to build her attraction in the right way to where she feels as though she's coming to you of her own accord. It's her idea, the things that she's asking, whether it's asking for weekend dates or asking for you know a hookup with you or asking eventually what kind of relationship you're in. Those are all steps that she's making because she's been able to naturally progress, okay? All you need to focus on, and this is the way that I was able to get out of my head about dating and not be so scared about, you know, oh my God, this is date one, but like, how do I get to date two? All you gotta do is learn to focus on one step at a time, okay? So, you're on this first date. 
all you're concentrating on is showing her the best possible time you can on this first date and trusting that if you're able to do the things on this date that make her feel good about herself, make her feel like she's connected to you, then she will want a second date. That's all you're doing, okay? So, in the course of this first date, yes, find out her likes, find out her dislikes, find out the things that make her tick, find out the things that you do have in common so you can start thinking, okay, so on the off chance I get another date, then I will know some ideas to go to, but don't go far into the future of like, okay, then where are we gonna live together and how many kids are we gonna have together, this and that, like, no, no, no. Focus on this first date. See how this goes. At the end of this date, go home, assess, and then ask her for that second date. Then you go on that second date and you focus on what? The second date. You focus on making certain moves, maybe a little escalation, maybe a little hand holding or touching or kissing or whatever, if you haven't done that on the first date or whatever. But like focus on those things. And again, you focus it on giving her the best possible time you can in this moment. Okay? At the end of that date, you go home, wait a few days, you ask for the third date. Assuming she says yes to that date, great. Now you have three dates and all you're doing at the very least, if you're gonna f uh, focus for the future, just focus on doing enough good stuff on this date to hopefully plan out the next date. If you just do that and just follow those steps and paths, what you'll start to find is that she will start coming to the table with things for you guys to do and conversations for you guys to have. And then she will start throwing on to you things that indicate to her that she's slowly starting to become ready to be part of your long-term plan, i.e. your long-term fantasy, okay? So no, it, it's perfectly fine if you find a girl attractive and if you see it's like, oh my God, this woman could possibly be like, you know, I could see her being my girlfriend at some point, but don't think that far out. At the very least, if you have an attraction to her and recognize that you have an attraction that's indicating that you could see this possibly going somewhere, but you don't realistically know where that place is yet. So all you're gonna do is say, let me get this first date. Let me get that second date. Let me get that third date. Let me get that first hookup. Let me get that first hug and touch. Let me get her saying things like, hey, I really care about you. And oh, you're, you're the best guy I've ever dated. And she starts suggesting weekend dates and other plans for dates you guys have. Like, let her be part of building that out. Because what you don't want to do is have this grandiose fantasy of her already being your life. And then you're overstepping and overdoing too early on to where you start to chase her off. And then you're not able to even get to the party of fantasy where you're together forever because you scared her off in the first two or three dates with all this future stuff that you were thinking, you know? So that's my two cents. It's not the worst thing in the world to do, but just recognize that by projecting ahead so far ahead, you may miss out on the important things you need to do in the current now and see if those things are going well before you even get to the fantasy future, all right? So that's all I got for today, guys. If you guys have any questions you want answered on one of these shows, you can write to me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. If you're having a dating situation that needs more depth conversation, you can go to my website and click on the coaching tab and sign up for a one-on-one -on -one phone coaching consultation. I also, you can also click on the products tab to check out my eBooks, audiobooks, and programs that are all designed to help you date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time, all right? And if you wanna support the show, Go to youtube.com forward slash Harry Wilmington, sign up for a subscription, and also send me a cash app at dollar sign Harry Wilmington. That's all I got for today. I'm Harry Wilmington, and I'll catch you guys on the next show. I'm out. Peace.